my dove. Ugh, I'm not your dove. Who are you that you would choose pain over pleasure? She's in Laura Dannon. And you, lady, are in big trouble. What authority do you speak of? That of your people? Or are you a castaway, grasping for a handhold in a tempest? There is a tempest in me, and it will not be quelled by you, Regent. That's not how the Force works. To think that any of these moments actually made it into the end product. If you put your time, money, heart, and soul into a creative project, don't you want it to be the best that it can actually be? Well, I had a conversation with Danielle, my editor for my book Bleed, Steam, and Steel, and she said that Honestly, too many authors, too many creators out there think that they don't need an editor. They wrote everything just right the first time. The first draft was perfect. It was beautiful. Uh, maybe I just had to take care of a few grammatical errors here and there because I'm just so amazing. This hubris from books to big screen is honestly an endemic that is destroying quality storytelling. Now, it's really easy to tear into other people and make fun of their work, but what about turning the mirror on yourself and acknowledging where you went wrong? So join me as I look back at five embarrassing and hilarious mistakes that I made with my own stories and let's see what we can learn from those experiences. Hi there everyone, Lars here from Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. So, mistake number one of many is this. Just because you typed a word correctly, that might not be the word you intended to use. Inconceivable. Inconceivable! 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 You keep using the word. I do not think it means what you think it means. In one of my upcoming books, I wrote the line, I'm calling your father after school today. We're going to decide which penal colony to send you to. Now, I misspelled penal and got penial. Uh, both are correct words, but one is a place for people to be worked as prisoners, and the other is, well, um, phallic in nature. What I've learned is this. Keep a dictionary close by. And if you're not sure about a word, look it up! And definitely get someone else to read your book. If they don't understand the word or if they catch the mistake, it'll let you know what you need to change. Mistake number two of many. Getting too fancy with your word usage, with your vocabulary. Sometimes we love to find creative, descriptive, or very on-the-nose words to use for various scenes. Like one time, I wanted to say exactly what the inside of bread is. The word is crumb. Excellent! The crumb of the bread! The bread's crumb! Or as I ended up writing this beautiful sentence, he cut the loaf, the crumbly crumb falling apart. Now that's just a bad sentence from beginning to end. I had to stop and laugh at myself for writing something so stupid. Luckily, I didn't need an editor to catch this one, but people can still write these kinds of horrifying gems where they think they're writing poetry. No, on the raft, you saved me. On the raft, you saved me. You convinced Miriel to save the men of Middle Earth. You convinced her. I have been awake since before the breaking of the first silence. I have had many names. <laughs> Do you remember what I whispered to you under this very tree? Touch the darkness once more. Well, again, it really helps to read your work out loud, and that way you can sort between what is poetry and what is paltry nonsense. And watch out for the poultry, too. And another thing you should learn is this. Laugh at yourself when you make a mistake. It's cathartic and is good for you. Mistake number three of many. <laughs> Enslaving myself to the deadline and not to the story's quality. I have done this plenty of times, especially with fanfiction writing. There's... These fanfics that I write are normally just 
fun side projects that give me a distraction while allowing me to keep up writing throughout the week. And I'll share a link to one of my most recent stories, which is a cruisy fanfic making fun of the Great British Baking Show. And I cranked that sucker out super fast for cruisy week and barely gave it a second read through. Turned out that I had written swatching instead of swatchling, which is important, it's one letter's difference to designate Queen's helpers, and I made this mistake over and over and over again. I managed to fix it, but I know I missed plenty of other smaller mistakes because I pushed myself to meet a deadline rather than worry about the story's overall quality. Now, that might have just been a fan fiction, but then again, you want to be able to crank out good stories, and you want to make sure that they are good as end products when they go out there to the rest of the world. So take your time. It's okay to be late in order to deliver the premium quality the first time around. Let's not repeat what happened to Cyberpunk. Mistake number four of many, not getting your world building sorted out. In my book, Knights of Halley Cruz, I made it very clear that instantaneous travel, aka teleportation, is restricted and cannot be used on the world of Halley Cruz. However, I have multiple parts in the book where teleportation is actually used. In fact, some of these scenes are critical to big plot moments. Even more embarrassing was that I didn't notice this contradiction until the 10th draft. Yeesh. I was doing all the editing myself, thinking that I was so, so great and that I didn't need an editor, and I was being an absolute idiot. In order to fix this, I had to lengthily explain throughout the book now how the magic system worked and how it could be manipulated to allow for certain kinds of teleportation. Now, this did lead to me actually making some incredible breakthroughs with the magic and doing some great world building which made that book and its uh, sequel books really more entertaining and more in-depth. But the thing is this, is that this is something that I should have worked out beforehand and not have to suddenly scramble to fix on the 10th draft. I wasted nine drafts without catching such an obvious mistake. The lessons I learned here were one, iron out your world building beforehand, and number two, have someone else read your book to edit it so that you aren't wasting nine drafts worth of time. Finally, mistake number five of many. Make sure that you get your main character's names right. Yeah, in the heat of the moment, you just get lost in writing. And that means that you're going to make all kinds of grammar, grammatical mistakes and spelling mistakes because you're just in the zone and you're doing stuff. And I have misspelled my own main character's names so many times. It sucks, but it happens. But the bad thing is this, is that when you're writing fantasy names, and those names are really wacky and crazy unless you've added that specific name to your computer's vocabulary, it will not realize that you've misspelled it wrong. It'll just say, hey, you've got a misspelling right here. And you might not catch that you misspelled spelled it. And here's the reason why. This is actually a very common mistake. Our minds are so brilliant that when we're reading stuff to ourselves, unless we're speaking it out loud, our brains immediately correct mistakes when they realize, oh, that's a, that's a problem right there. That name is misspelled. But it doesn't necessarily translate to your fingers suddenly fixing the problem. And so even, and so just because you're so familiar, you can't see the forest through the trees, even though your main character's name is misspelled in your head, you've already corrected it and you've moved on. This is why it's again very important, though sometimes embarrassing, to read your own works out loud. So that way you can catch spelling mistakes, but especially spelling mistakes with unique fantasy names that you have written, because your readers will pick up on these mistakes. This is something new to them, so they will notice every single little deviation. This has happened to me multiple times, thanks actually to beta readers who have caught when I've misspelled certain names, and they're all like, hey, Lars, is this a new character or is this the same character? I just gotta make sure. And it's been embarrassing how many times this has happened to me, when, especially when I've passed off my stories to my beta readers and editors. Uh, but again, you can catch it if you read your books to yourself out loud and allow yourself to fully process any sort of spelling mistakes, especially 
for those weird fantasy names that we all love to write. Well, there you have it. Five mistakes out of the many that I have made as a novice author. Being able to acknowledge my mistakes and weaknesses has helped me become a better author in the process. And I think that Hollywood writers could honestly learn from this, as well as plenty of other novices out there, that if you take the time to edit your stories and don't just think that you've cranked out something amazing on the first try, we might actually start creating decent entertainment once again. So if you have any funny or embarrassing lessons from your own writing that you would like to share, please share them down in the comments below. And if you're looking for more writing advice, then please check out our podcast, Camille's Harem, found on Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, The Works. We have writing exercises for you over at our Pinterest page, and we would love for you to join our growing community of novice authors. And if you'd like to support us, please check out our published books in the description. Thank you for joining us on this adventure that we call writing, and until the next video, y'all, choose.